This is a communion service at St. John's. Because of these extraordinary times, we have been granted permission to serve and receive communion at home. Today we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion and invite all baptized Christians to join us together at the Lord's table. So if you are viewing this video and wish to receive communion, we uh, suggest that you stop right now and go and get elements. So something to drink and something to eat, and we will use them in the service. The consecration of elements has been done for us by Pastor Sean Van Dyke. And because we have this permission, we can receive the elements at home as long as we are doing that in an attitude of receptivity in the Holy Spirit, uniting the body of Christ across time and space.
Um, it is our custom to begin with some joys from the congregations, and I have a few of them this week. Um, last night was our Blue Mountain, our local school's graduation, and we especially graduate our Blue Mountain graduate, Chris Holler. Um, Edna actually sent in a joy this week, Edna Hart, and said she was really glad that no one dropped the watermelon last week. That was her joy for the week. Um, I talked to Ruth Gaston, who has not been with us for a while, um, out in Pine Grove, and it was her birthday when I called her on Monday. And while I was speaking with her, they came into her room with flowers and cookies, which she was just thrilled about. And she told me that there was a woman that week who was 101 years old, and the uh, home she is in had hot dogs and hamburgers on the grill outside for her entire extended family so she could see them on her 101st birthday. So there's wonderful things that people are doing in the community. We congratulate the Lions this morning. Um, I'm here on Saturday morning, and they are right now on the square collecting food for the food pantry. So thank you, Lions. Um, Trina ran a 5K this morning or uh, uh, run across America to feed the hungry. So congratulations, Trina. And uh, one of the last things, if you notice the altar flowers this week, um, yesterday was a very sad occasion here. It was a very small family service of uh, remembrance for Catherine Heimdall who passed this week. Um, but her flowers are a joy as Catherine was. So thank you, Catherine. You are still with us in the spirit this morning. So let us pray. Everlasting God, we come to you today in a time of pandemic and turmoil. We come to you who are the one true steady force in all of our lives. This morning we pray for guidance from your Holy Spirit that we may know the path you wish us to take as Christians in this world. Grant us the wisdom, comfort, and guidance of your Holy Spirit. Help us to respect the humanity of all people. Help us to see clearly any way in which we personally need to change to be more the people of Christ. Help us to be peacemakers. Help us to model the way of Christ to those around us. Help us not to despair, but to know that you are with us today and all days. Amen. And now we'll take time for a prayer of confession. Dear God, we know that you know what is in our hearts and minds. We know also that we can come to you and ask forgiveness and if we repent of our sins, we will receive your healing grace. We ask that from you now, and we confess our sins. Let us take a silent time now to review our week and remember what we have done that was wrong. Or when we have not done the good that we could have, we confess in our hearts to the Lord. Friends in Christ, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is God's gift to us and the world so that we may know abundant life. Good morning. The first scripture reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 6. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. 
Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The Gospel reading for today is taken from John chapter 14, verses 23 through 26. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said, said to you. Here ends our readings. Thank you, Tracy. And this morning, we have a children's message from Lorraine Jones. Good morning. I do wish you were sitting in front of me because I'm going to have to answer all my questions. But since I've been home so much during the pandemic and the, uh, all that's going on, I do a lot of praying. And sometimes I start my prayer with, Dear God, or Heavenly Father. Sometimes I'd say, Dear Jesus, or Blessed Jesus. Am I talking to different people? No, I'm talking to just one person, and I'm talking to God, who is the Trinity. And the Trinity comes from a Latin word meaning triad, which is three. So when you think about it, if three babies are born, we call them triplets, that's right. And when you were little, you rode a tricycle, because it had three wheels. And Mr. Holler, who is taping this is using a tripod, meaning it has three legs. So when you hear Trinity, you know that we're talking about the Father, God, and the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And if you notice, these are, we call them concentric circles, but you'll learn about that later. But you see, they all interact and so they're all the same thing. So when we talk, we sing a song in church, and it said, it's the one that said, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. So you know when you hear that, that we're talking about the same God, our Father, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I wish I could see all of you and bless all of you, but have a very blessed day and hope to see you very soon in church. Lorraine was a teacher in our school system for many, many years. Uh, many of our children and ourselves have may have had Lorraine as a teacher. So we thank you, Lorraine, for that special message very, very much. And now a blessing for our children, children. May the Holy Spirit be with you all the days of your lives, and may you be conscious of that presence in your life, in times of trial and in times of joy, because the Spirit is always with you, now and forever. Amen. So today is Trinity Sunday. Trinity Sunday is always celebrated the first Sunday after Pentecost. As Christians, we say we believe in the Trinity very often. We say we believe in the Trinity when we say the Apostles' Creed, when we say the Nicene Creed, and it's in the Statement of Faith in the United Church of Christ. Yet, to explain what the Trinity is, as Bill noted last week, beyond the ability of most Christians. As a matter of fact, one author I read this week said, common wisdom is that if you discuss the Trinity for longer than a few minutes, you will slip into heresy. Now, I went to Holy Trinity High School in Westfield, New Jersey, so you think I might have an inside track on the Holy Trinity. 
but I'm wrong. But no, you would be wrong. At Holy Trinity, uh, I know you find this hard to believe, but we students would try to stump the nuns as often as we could. And one of the questions we'd ask them is, what is the Holy Trinity? And they would look at us and say, it is a great mystery. And we always thought when they said that, it meant they couldn't give us an answer, which was true. Um, but theologians can't give that answer very often. It is something that we do accept as a mystery. And it's something that we will not know, because we will not know the full nature of God in this lifetime. I, I was touched by the wonderful testimony that Bill gave last week about the presence of the Holy Spirit in his wife, one of the members of the Trinity. And in thinking about sharing this time with you and appreciating Bill's testimony, I wanted to share with you something more about the presence of the Holy Trinity in all of our lives. And actually, Scripture says a whole lot about that. But I'm going to start at the beginning. So what do we know about the Holy Spirit, and when do we start to know? Well, first of all, sometimes we call the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost. And I was a little kid going to Catholic school. We used to bless ourselves, we called it. So it's in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. And as a child, especially when I was a little child, I used to think of the Holy Ghost in terms of Casper the Friendly Ghost. And I don't, I'm sure I'm marking my age here. Many of you might not know Casper the Friendly Ghost, but he was this little white ghost who would follow people around and he would help them out even though they couldn't see him. So, that actually wasn't a bad uh, connection for me to make as a little kid because it meant that the, the Holy Ghost is with you all the time, following you around, and doing good things for you. And that's pretty accurate. So that wasn't a bad thing. Although, uh, I will tell you now, the Holy Spirit is actually not cast for the friendly ghost. But the other question I had was, why do we say Holy Ghost and when we mean the Holy Spirit? So I looked that up this week, and it's actually interesting. It comes from Middle English, which translated the word spirit as ghast. And that became ghost, and people stuck with the word ghost. So they both have the concept of life-giving, which is what the Holy Spirit really is to us. The Bible, both the Old and the New Testament, have a lot to say about the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit is mentioned over 90 times. And the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament comes upon people when they are asked by God to do something. So David declared, the Holy Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and his word was on my tongue. This is to Samuel. Ezekiel reports that the Holy Spirit entered me when he spoke to me. Gideon, Samson, Saul, many others in the Old Testament talk about the Spirit entering them to allow them to do whatever it is that God has asked them to do. The prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament also um, mentions a number of things about the Spirit of God, and he talks about that in relation to the coming Messiah. So this is, this is something that Isaiah said in Isaiah 11. The Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might, the Spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. Um, Shades to the Alley Chorus in there. Now, later, when Jesus was here, we hear that echoed by Jesus himself in his declaration at the synagogue at Nazareth when he started his public ministry. I'm going to read to you from Luke. He, meaning Jesus, went to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went to synagogue as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found a place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the freedom for prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. 
The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began by saying to them, Today this scripture is filled in your hearing. Now we remember the accounts of Jesus' baptism by John. And in that, there was the visible descent of the Holy Spirit on Jesus in the form of a dove. So the Holy Spirit was with Jesus throughout his ministry. Now in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is mentioned in all four Gospels, mentioned in the Book of Acts, and Paul writes about it extensively in his epistles. The evangelist John, in the Gospel, spends a great deal of time at, at the end of his, toward the end of his Gospel, because Jesus is repeatedly promising his uh, apostles that when he left them, they would not be alone. That when he left them, the Spirit, the Spirit would come to them as comforter and guide. John 14 says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot see him, meaning the Spirit, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. Matthew, also toward the end of his gospel, Matthew 28, has a, a, some discussion of the Spirit. Jesus is giving the um, apostles the Great Commission before he leaves, it's right before his ascension. And he sends them out into the world to bring Christianity. And Matthew 28 says, Jesus is saying to them, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So they are to baptize in the name of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of comfort and guidance is to be given to every new Christian in baptism. Now in each of our baptisms, we were given the Holy Spirit. We're too young to remember that, but we were. Part of one of the prayers that we say in the UCC baptism is, uh, baptism is a sacrament, it shows the pouring out of the Holy Spirit on those whom God has chosen. In baptism, God works in us the power of forgiveness, the renewal of the Spirit, and the knowledge of the call to be God's people always. And then later in the service, the minister prays over the child and says, The Holy Spirit be upon you, child of God, disciple of Christ and member of the church. That's pretty powerful. Paul keeps reminding us that the Spirit is in it. He says, do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? And he's talking to each one of us. Now, what does the Spirit do as he is indwelling us? He does a number of things. The Holy Spirit keeps us from sin. This is Paul again in Romans. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. The Holy Spirit guides us. The Holy Spirit teaches us the ways of Jesus. This is from Ephesians, Paul again. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him, meaning Christ. And the Holy Spirit gives us spiritual gifts. That's, Paul writes about that several times. I'm going to read the one from 1 Corinthians. Now to each one of the, of the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another a gift of faith, uh, to others gifts of healing by that Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of those tongues. All these are works of one and the same Spirit. 
and he distributes of them to each one just as he determines. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to be good and active Christians. Every week in our prayer of confession, we ask God to forgive us not only what we did wrong, but what good we have not done. The Holy Spirit gives us the strength to do God's will in this world. And he also gives us different gifts so that we need to be in community with each other to do that will in the world. Last week, Bill said he speaks to the Holy Spirit every day. And I think we all could benefit from such conversations. God is always with us. His spirit comforts and guides each one of us exactly the way that they did, the Holy Spirit did the apostles 2,000 years ago. So open yourself to this spiritual treasure, which is a gift directly down the generations from Jesus to you. And may the Holy Spirit bless you and guide you and comfort you and keep you all of your days. Amen. Now let us join together in saying the UCC Statement of Faith. We believe in God, the Eternal Spirit, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father, and to his deeds we testify. He calls the worlds into being, creates man in his own image, and sets before him the ways of life and death. He seeks in holy love to save all people from blamelessness and sin. He judges men and nations by his righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Lord, he has come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death, and reconciling the world to himself. He bestows upon us his Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding and covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. He calls us into his church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be his servants in the service of men, to proclaim the gospel to all the world and resist the powers of evil, to share in Christ's baptism and meet at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. He promises to all who trust him forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, his presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in his kingdom, which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto him. Amen.
Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, appeared to Mary Magdalene. On that same day, he sat at table with two disciples and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is a joyful feast of the people of God, men and women, youth and children, come from the east and west, from the north and south, and gather about Christ's table. This table is for all Christians who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks and praise to God most high. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We give you thanks, Holy One, Almighty and Eternal God, always and everywhere through Jesus Christ. We bless you for your continual love and care for every creature. Above all, we give thanks for the gift of Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. By his obedience to you, by his suffering on the cross, and his resurrection from the dead, he delivered us from the way of sin and death. We praise you that Jesus now reigns with you in glory and ever lives to pray for us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit leading us into truth, defending us in adversity, and uniting us in one holy church. Therefore, with the entire company of saints in heaven and on earth, we worship and glorify you, God most holy. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabbath, heaven and earth are full, are full of the majesty of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. We remember on the night of betrayal and desertion, and on the eve of his death, Jesus gathered with his disciples for the feast of Passover. Jesus took bread. And giving thanks to you, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. He also took the cup in the same way after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Eternal God, we unite in this covenant of faith, recalling Christ's suffering and death, rejoicing in Christ's resurrection, and awaiting Christ's return in victory. We spread your table with these gifts of the earth and of our labor. We present to you our very lives, committed to your service in behalf of all people. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit on this bread and wine, on our gifts, and on us. Strengthen your universal church, that it may be the champion of peace and justice in the world. Restore the earth with your grace, that is able to make all things new. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you today in a time of great turmoil. We pray for those throughout our country and the world who have been on the front lines to protect us now in many ways. We pray for peace in our country. We pray for wisdom to find a vaccine for COVID-19. We pray for patience and for kindness toward each other. We pray for all those that we personally treasure and all those we have not met. We pray this today with Christians and people of all faiths throughout the world. And as Christians, we pray the, the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and power, and the glory forever. Amen. The bread 
which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. The cup of blessing which we pour is the remembrance of the blood of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God come for all is ready. The body of Christ is ready. blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Bound to the God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good and render no one evil to no one. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may God bless you and keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you. May God lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace. Amen.